So you've installed CC Vault and you're looking to pair your ledger or your Trezor? Let's take a look at how together. Welcome back to Woodland Pools, your place for the latest Cardano news, tutorials, and the information you need to grow your investment with confidence. Today, let's take a look at how you can pair your Ledger or your Trezor hardware wallets with CC Vault. Let's jump in. Okay, so once you've finished installing CC Vault, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna wanna pair our hardware wallet. So we're gonna be using a Ledger Nano X for this example. So let's start by plugging the hardware wallet in. Enter your pin to unlock it if you need to. A lot of times you'll get errors if you try and pair it while the screen is locked. So let's try and avoid that issue right away. Then make sure you're inside of the Cardano app. You'll click on add wallet and then let's go to pair. For this example, we're gonna be doing the Ledger Nano X, but it works the same for the Nano S or the Trezor Model T. So let's hit next. And these tips here are actually really useful because we've found these are usually, when you get these like nondescript errors with your pairing, it's usually one of these things. Make sure your Ledger's unlocked and also make sure there's no other app that's connected to it right now. So if you have Ledger Live that's open, go ahead and kill that. Or if you have the Trezor Suite that's open, kill that as well so that the only thing that's interfacing with your hardware wallet is just CC Vault. So we have everything else closed. Our hardware wallet is plugged in. It is open and in the Cardano app, we've typed in our pin. So let's hit next. And now we're gonna get instructions on the hardware wallet. Right now it's asking me to export my public key. So I'm gonna confirm that and confirm the public key export. And great, now we need to give it a name. So let's go ahead and call this the Woodland Pools Ledger Nano X. You can call this anything you want. It's totally up to you and hit save. Cool, so we see our wallet was created successfully. So let's take a look around here and see what we've got. We can see here the summary of any transactions we have. For tokens here, uh, if you buy any Cardano native assets, such as World Mobile tokens or Sunday tokens or anything like that, or if you purchase any CNFTs and you get them sent to this wallet, these will appear here in your tokens section. The account section is what's used to create multiple accounts for delegating to one or multiple pools, and we'll address that in a minute. We can see a history of our transactions. We can send from the wallet, we can receive. Um, here, uh, staking again, we'll talk about that in a second. Voting is for Project Catalyst voting. Quick caveat to keep in mind, just so we don't get confused. If this is a wallet that you've previously paired with another Cardano app, such as Yoroi, as soon as you pair it with CC Vault, all of your balances and all of your transactions will be reflected exactly the same as they were with any other Cardano wallet you paired it to. For example, if we come to Yoroi, we can see here this same Woodland Pools Ledger Nano X with 10 ADA and the same series of transactions that if we come to CC Vault, we see the same 10 ADA and the exact same sequence of transactions. So if this is an existing hardware wallet, you can skip the next chapter about funding and go to the chapter after that where we talk about some additional CC Vault features and if this is a brand new wallet and you still need to fund it, stick around and we'll show you how. First, and let's go to the receive section here and let's go ahead and fund this wallet. So the first thing we wanna do is we're gonna click on share and we're gonna copy our address. And this is the address that you wanna paste into either your other wallet or your exchange or wherever else that you wanna be sending the funds to this wallet from. And what we always recommend, especially if you're new to this whole process, is to always do a test transaction first send just like one or two ADA, just to give yourself some peace of mind that everything went through correctly, that you figured out correctly how to paste it. I know it can be kind of anxiety inducing sometimes. So paste this address into your exchange or wherever else, send over just one or two ADA as a test transaction. We'll do the same and then we'll continue from there. Okay, so it looks like our test transaction has gone through successfully, so that means we did it right. So now go back to your exchange or whatever other wallet you were sending from and go ahead and use the same address and send the remainder of your balance and we'll do the same. Cool, so it looks like the rest of our balance went through and your wallet is now fully funded with all of your funds from the exchange. Congratulations. But hey, let's take a look at a couple more things here and a few more settings that we wanna show you. So if we come over to the settings section, the first one is here, the address book. So let's say, for example, that you are regularly sending back and forth between a couple of wallets, or maybe you send regularly back to the exchange. Instead of having to go and find that address and then manually paste it in here every time, similar to what you did to send to here, Instead, now you can add in the address book a name for this person or this destination, paste it in and save it and it's always easily accessible. So that's a nice one to have. And the other one that we really recommend for everyone to do is this wallet access password. So this actually how you can see here on some of our other wallets here is a way that you can lock down the wallet so it can't even be viewed. No one can take a look at it or see what any of your funds are. With your hardware wallet, you obviously need your pin to get into it or to confirm any transactions. But this wallet access password is another layer of security where nobody can even get into the interface to try and transact with your hardware wallet without entering this password. So we highly recommend that 
everybody do it because kind of why not? Um, so let's go ahead and do it. We'll show how. So go ahead and enter a strong password that you're going to use to lock the wallet down and we'll do the same. Once you've entered it, hit save. Great. And our wallet lock password is updated. And once we do that, we'll see two things. We see a button now here for lock wallet, but we also see this little lock icon here. So if I go ahead and click on this lock wallet icon, we see that my wallet is now locked and you can't see any information about it or anything about the funds or anything like that. So let's go ahead and unlock it. We'll enter our password to unlock the wallet and that gets us right back in. Fantastic. So now that our wallet is set up, the last thing we need to do is to delegate our ADA so we can generate staking returns risk-free. In the next video, we'll show you how you can delegate to one or multiple pools using CC Vault. We'll see you in the next video.